Dutasteride. It's never been officially approved for hair loss. Yet despite that, it's still widely talked about and used by men with hair loss. In this video, I'm gonna review the data on Dutasteride and specifically topical Dutasteride. So you can make an informed decision with the help of your medical doctor about whether Dutasteride is right for you. We will see how it compares to Finasteride, how effective it is, if it has more or less side effects, and the best way to use it for the best results. So Dutasteride has the same mechanism of action as Finasteride. It inhibits the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. The difference is that it inhibits even better, making it even more powerful. Whereas finasteride lowers serum DHT levels by around 70%, dutasteride typically exceeds 90%. Consequently, it's even more effective at regrowing hair. Oral finasteride gives on average 16 new hairs per centimeter squared of balding scalp and dutasteride tops it at 17.6. Not a massive difference, but a clear advantage nevertheless. And when it comes to side effects, they're both actually quite similar. Erectile dysfunction, loss of libido, sperm changes are the most common side effects you can expect. For this reason, and given that its half-life is around a month, many men hesitate to take oral dutasteride. An alternative to oral dutasteride though is delivering it directly to the scalp. Now, unlike finasteride, dutasteride molecules are more difficult to deliver in a topical formulation. This is because they have a larger size and a larger molecular weight. So the alternative that doctors have developed is called mesotherapy. Tiny quantities of dutasteride directly into the skin. Mesotherapy was first used by doctors in the 1950s, so it's not a new technology. Meso in Greek means middle, and the term owes to the fact that the injections are done at a depth of three to four millimeters, targeting the middle part of the skin, the so-called mesoderm. So mesotherapy refers only to the delivery method, but it can involve various medications and indications apart from hair loss. In recent years, doctors have started using it to treat various cosmetic conditions like cellulite, wrinkles, and pigmentation disorders. It's also used for musculoskeletal disorders. Commonly injected compounds include various pharmaceuticals, natural plant extracts, homeopathic agents, vitamins, and botanicals. The procedure takes place at a doctor's office and the immediate side effects are pain and redness in the injected area. The sessions are typically once a week for the first month and once every two to four weeks thereafter. So how effective is it for hair loss? The idea of dutasteride mesotherapy for hair loss is quite recent. We got our first studies around 15 years ago. And to this day, for the most part, they have very small sample sizes, typically without a control group. Oftentimes they don't even have hair count, so it can be somewhat difficult to have confidence in their results. Having said that, there have been a few solid studies. A recent review looked at the published research and identified all the randomized clinical trials that had a placebo group. In other words, these were trials where participants were randomly assigned at the start to receive either dutasteride mesotherapy or placebo, in this case, saline solution. These are considered the highest quality research because A, there is a placebo control group, and B, the patients are randomly assigned, reducing the possibility of researcher bias. The review also looked at similar randomized clinical trials of oral dutasteride. All in all, the reviewers identified three such trials of dutasteride mesotherapy. They also found five randomized clinical trials of oral dutasteride. Treatment in all studies lasted a minimum of 12 weeks. So what were the results? While both oral dutasteride and mesotherapy were effective, the oral route seemed to have a clear advantage in terms of hair regrowth. The mean change in hair growth was 15.9 new hairs per centimeter squared in the oral studies. This compared to only 7.9 hairs for mesotherapy. Taking these figures at face value, the oral dutasteride is probably twice as effective. Bear in mind, however, that for the mesotherapy group, there was a very small number of participants. So we can't really have a high degree of confidence at this figure of 7.9 new hairs per centimeter squared. 
Not only that, but the review also found that the mesotherapy studies also suffered from a high risk of bias. In other words, the researchers hadn't taken adequate measures to minimize bias, meaning that the results might not be the most reliable. Be that as it may, until we get new and better studies, this will be our best estimate. So what about the side effects? So when it comes to ease of use and how practical the treatment is, obviously nothing can beat a daily dutasteride pill. The whole reason you're looking to mesotherapy in the first place is to lower your risk of side effects. So the million dollar question is, what does the published research show with regards to side effects? Are they less likely with mesotherapy? According to the review, none of the published mesotherapy studies reported any sexual adverse effects. This was in contrast to the studies of oral dutasteride where you got the standard sexual side effects of lowered libido, erectile dysfunction, and sperm changes. But that's not to say there were no side effects whatsoever far from it. For example, last year we got a very concerning pair of case reports out of Spain. They involved the development of patchy alopecia after dutasteride mesotherapy. The first was a 42-year-old woman with pattern hair loss who developed patchy alopecia one month after a single therapy session. The second was a man in his late 50s who had received two mesotherapy sessions. He also developed patchy alopecia resistant to treatment. Case reports like these have been popping up regularly over the years, so they are in no way just a one-off. Other reported side effects include scarring, i.e. irreversible alopecia, as well as scalp infections that can lead to the formation of abscesses filled with pus. So what's our take on this? What's striking about tutasteride mesotherapy and mesotherapy in general is the disconnect between how popular it is on the internet and how little it's being studied scientifically. To date, there is no standardized protocol of where exactly on the scalp to place the injections, how many injections are needed, how often, the dosage, etc., etc. This is all determined anecdotally based on the doctor's personal experience rather than standardized guidelines. There's also very little published data with regard to its long-term efficacy. Most studies simply look at the first four months of active treatment. We don't really have a good data for what's supposed to happen after that four months. In other words, how long the regrowth will last without maintenance sessions, how frequent those sessions should be, and so on. And there's the issue of the side effects. While you probably won't have to worry about sexual side effects, there's the very real possibility that you'll get nasty side effects on your scalp including potentially irreversible hair loss. But even more importantly, there are no studies into the long-term safety of this thing. In other words, what happens if you carry on injecting dutasteride for years on end? I have a feeling that if we get the studies on that, the results might not be that ideal. And then of course, there's the cost. Mesotherapy is something that you'll have to get done at the doctor's office and it won't come cheap. When you take all this into consideration, dutasteride mesotherapy is not something we would recommend, but you'll have to talk to your doctor about it. At least not until you've exhausted other more conventional treatments, including topical finasteride. In summary, dutasteride and finasteride both inhibit the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT, but dutasteride is more powerful, reducing DHT levels by over 90% compared to finasteride's 70%. This makes dutasteride slightly more effective for hair regrowth, but the side effects like erectile dysfunction and loss of libido lead some to prefer topical application. Mesotherapy involves dutasteride injections directly into the scalp. This avoids sexual side effects, but carries risks like patchy alopecia and scalp infections. These are presumably rare, but we don't have enough data to know just how rare. Despite its popularity online, mesotherapy lacks standardized protocols and long-term safety data, making it less recommendable compared to other established treatments. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. Have you tried topical dutasteride? If so, what were the results? Please leave a comment telling us your story. Also, if you have any topics that you want me to cover next, leave a comment below and make sure you head over to hairguard.com so you can learn about the most effective natural hair care protocol that's been helping me keep my hair for the past five, six, seven years, despite having aggressive male pattern baldness. All right, see you in the next video.